It's the end of an era, as the team completes their final mission. And sure, of course they beat the Chromacons, but the real question is, did they leave you in a satisfying way to wrap up seven seasons of the most awesome adventure? Man, eh, look, Fitz is alive, so honestly, what else do I want? Plus, they got a cute little kid, so... You guys were right. I'm glad I was wrong. It is the series finale, hard to say, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episodes 12 and 13. The end is at hand, and what we're fighting for. It's family. Hey everyone, Day here, and welcome to our review, our final review, God, still hard to say, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, you can expect a few spoilers coming your way. Uh, and also, again, if you guys are in a time crunch, you only got a little bit of time, hey, take a look down in the description below. We'll have this entire review titleized, time-stamped, broken down into easily digestible chunks. You can watch the middle of the review first, the end second, the beginning last. You can watch this review in any order you'd like. All right, so... No, I... I gotta say, it's actually a little hard for me to kind of sum up how I am feeling right now. Um, I, I guess in some ways I'm kind of in two different ways. I mean, I guess, yeah, looking at this, looking at this kind of a couple of different ways. Maybe that'll be the easiest way to break this down. I mean, from, as a series ender, as a, a functional unit that was closing up a lot of loopholes, giving us a little callbacks, making some reconnections, wrapping up the story. Did a great serviceable job. We had some action, we had some great moments, we had some beautiful callbacks, uh, what the season one exploding slammo weapon and such. That was awesome. We got May talking about the cavalry showing up. I mean, again, there were a lot of these great kind of like callback moments. And, and, and even as they sort of wrapped up, I think at the end, by giving us that one year jump and kind of bringing the team back together, it, it sort of instilled the fact that even within the show, this is the end and this is how we're talking about moving on moving forward with our lives even though they're different we always have what we have and we have new adventures going forward again not just a message about the characters or the show but really for us the fans by the way you'll hear more about this review in this final episode this friday on fans of shield with both me rob stone and don willie friday night 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern fans of shield what just happened there all right, never mind. Um, so like I said, it'd be a very serviceable ending. And by giving us that little time jump, telling us that everything's going to be okay, we move on, everything's okay, everyone's still alive, even if someone's lost in a, in a different time stream. I think that worked in a way, even to give us an emotional ending. When we get that final uh, uh, scene off with Coulson flying off with uh, Lola, the new Lola be red or black color changing um but that kind of bookends the series we had the opener with that ending and then we kind of end the the final episode with uh with him driving off in Lolo as well so that's what i'm saying from a from a service serviceable standpoint it was it, it worked it really did um and as i talk about it you know i feel a little bit better about it because the other side of it there's, I don't know. I mean, in, in, in some ways, I guess I'm a little lost. While I love that final scene as a way to kind of just do our little reconnect and then show everybody pulling off the glasses and where we are. We got Mac aboard the helicarrier leading shield. Very t very, very, looking very Fury-esque. Uh, we got Daisy out with her sister, you know, cruising the stars. Don't really know what their particular mission is on that. 
but hey, you got a starship, you're going to do that. You know, if it's Simmons or, or, or you're retired, raising their kid, you little girl. Um, Yo-Yo's still in Agent Coulson's wandering the earth like Kane. Um, sure, okay, he's doing his own kung fu adventure. But it was also kind of a hard scene. It was, it was painful. It was drawn out. It felt too sappy, too much. I mean, Jesus, you guys can get together. You can't spend five minutes in a room trading some stories between your own. What the heck kind of family is that, man? At least, at least the spies goodbye had everybody at a bar raising a glass at once. I don't know. And again, even though... The fact that they were talked so much about this being a final mission, I guess, took some of the drama out of it in some ways as well. I mean, what, uh, the, the, the end is at hand. I mean, it was great. That was the rescue mission, going and getting uh, uh, Gemma and her whole memory thing going on and creating out. And I'm just going to assume that in that injection, which broke it down, there was also some nanites that were transmitting to uh, uh, Sybil. And that's how she was just waiting for it. She could hear the transmission. And then once they got to Earth, too far out of transmission. I'm just going to go ahead and say that to explain the whole, we need to hear about it and then we don't talk about the whole paying attention to fits anymore thing in the moment being passed. I'm just going to go with that. But again, a very serviceable episode of just going in, rescue, coming out. Uh, I loved using the chronicoms on the missile end <laughs> to blow things up. Seuss is playing his part here really nice. And again, just some great little moments. Even the bits about Deke being set up here with like, we've got to save Gemma, yes, and Deke, and whatever. So cruel. And then he ends up kind of being the savior day, so I mean, he gets his little arc, sure. But like I said, it's serviceable, but the problem is, is by the end, when they're just like, oh my god, this is going to be our final mission, there wasn't any drama anymore. I mean, it's not like they were going to lose to the Chronicoms. Maybe the question was going to be who was going to die. But even that kind of dramatic moment with Daisy was only left for like 20 seconds, maybe 30 before the ship appears behind. You know that she's going to be OK. So from a dramatic standpoint, it just it, it lost a lot of that. I mean, to, again, to me. I don't know if that carried the same for everyone else. So, I mean, again, it was just like we get our serviceable ending. We get the awesome return of Fitz, which was emotional and cool. And then we got the brief story behind of what was going on and how that time passed, which I was excited to see. Uh, I did love how they reconnected back up to the scenes with season six, how they overlaid the time because the Zephyr shows up and they... Uh, go into Cloak, that they can use the Zephyr that's still on the planet, because they arrived a little bit before they left, before, in season end of six here, to draw fire so that then they can use that distraction to fly back on board. I mean, there was, there was kind of a cool thing. Uh, and that they were the support team in the outfits that went and helped and did the whole cleanup and stuff and so on. That was all very cool. I mean, like I said, there were a lot of, of, of great moments within this. And I think that's probably where it is. While the overall story lacked some emotional intensity in the sense of, of drama and fear and concern of who was going to make it, what was going to happen, those type of things, there were a lot of great moments. There were a lot of great callbacks. There were a lot of great character bits. Great fight with uh, uh, Coulson and May there when she shows up as a cowboy. That was awesome. I liked the Daisy hand-to-hand -hand fight just before Nathaniel showed up. Not so much the Nathaniel fight. I've, I've really tired him as, as just sort of a, a, a whiny, I'm going to take over the earth. Did you really think the Chronicoms are going to do this? This is less of a review summary and more of a rant I'm turning this out to be. This may be a shorter overall review. I guess I'm just sort of purging right now and and and, and sharing because again like i said it's just i feel split i feel split in many ways uh again i liked it i felt good everybody was alive they were doing their thing so that's kind of nice yeah we never got our battle in new york thing but that's all right uh we did get a sort of new york callback because they did a blackout in 83 there in order to power everything that was kind of cool um but yeah, and I mean, and then they fixed and got back. It's something like we expected them to nose tail into the MCU. I mean, we hoped. 
but it wasn't necessarily likely. They did end things in their own regards, where if anything wants to pick up later on, they've got them in places and people are still alive. So that's good. Um, but I guess I just didn't get any of the huge fist-pumping moments that I was hoping for. So, like I said, mixed. Overall, good, serviceable, had some great moments. I loved some little tie-ins and things and so on, but there just felt a certain teeth out of it, which I guess just left me a little underwhelmed. But certainly not from an effects standpoint, because those were beautiful. This is where the budget's been saved for. And I can really appreciate that. So, Belinda fans, how you all doing? Uh, because this was definitely not the ending I think uh, a lot of you were looking for. And, you know, and I think they tried to do this with the whole kind of moving on and change thing. We did have a great scene between them um, when they're talking about when... Uh, 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 Coulson is putting together uh, Fitz's old design to stop Garrett. And May is like, man, I'm still getting used to you doing tech. And he's like, I'm so used to being tech. Uh, are you? No, not really. I mean, again, he is softening from his LMD bit. And then also with this, we have May getting philosophical, something that she has never done, not really the way that she is. So with this, I think they're trying to encapsulate that change we aren't the people that we say we are the time it's more let's see what, what was that uh do we change the timelines or the timelines change us um again just that they are moving on they are different people and in a way it does sort of soften i think a lot of may's view of phil bot uh phil lmd um and certainly by our final scene where she's like, hey, you should stop by, we need to meet, so on, I think I will, you know. They definitely kind of leave that open for a, a, a future sort of relationship. But again, all very nebulous in a lot of ways. But again, I think one of the ways of doing it. However, they did give us that great callback later on, which I have mentioned before, uh, where Phil shows up there as captured by Sybil. Uh, which he beautifully uses and turns around on her. Oh no, I was wondering, why are you telling the lighthouse? Why are you giving up all this intel? Oh right, you just needed that information so that the cavalry could arrive again. Great drop in, it may's like the cavalry, because she never wanted to be called that before. So again, a great kind of change there. Beautiful fight between them too. That was kind of a fun moment, uh, uh, really. So I, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed a lot of that. Um, and actually, since we were in there and we were talking about the whole Garrett stuff, I, l <laughs> I enjoyed Garrett a lot more in this, in this episode. I think they just let him play as opposed to referring back. And so he, w you know, uh, uh, James did a great job, uh, I felt in this episode, portraying his father. Because to me, he was less trying to keep doing the callbacks to, hey, I'm John Garrett, and could just play the character as the character. You know, even with the sort of, uh, 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 a Texan callback there uh, when he was planting the bombs, which something that uh, that Don mentioned in, in Fans of S.H.I.E.L.D. a, a couple episodes ago. So, again, there's are kind of fun little moments there. Uh, and I love that he, that he appears right on the X where Phil's like, yeah, I thought that this was going to be compared to the structural anatomy, and then uses Yo-Yo to teleport the constraints onto him. Um... Did Fair turn around that his trust in Nathaniel certainly didn't go both ways? Of course not. Nathaniel's just a psychopath. For some reason still thinks what? After this whole Chronicom destroying S.H.I.E.L.D. and they're wanting to take over Earth that he thinks that he's still going to get Earth after this? He was never going to succeed. It was just he was being played the whole time. But he mentioned that, no, I'm playing them against, you know, <laughs> they're not using me, I'm using them. Sorry, I'm, I'm digressing. But again, Nathaniel bad. And certainly Garrett paying the price doubly. I love the fact that they save him. New timeline, new John Garrett. I want to wear a white hat now. Saves them and is immediately shot by the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. And they nobody even cares. Now nah, he was a bad guy. Glad he's dead. 
an unexpected quick way for him to go, but probably the best to just, okay, he's done servicing his needs. Let's get rid of the character. Now, I guess it's only appropriate to continue on to the bar being Garrett's end, and also the fact that Garrett ended, got his life ended to him by a young aged hand. Again, only appropriate, so it was on Garrett's order that, uh, that Ward killed hand later on, earlier in the series, but later on in time. I know temporal mechanics get all very funky. Um, so yeah, the big bar sort of reuniting scene. And again, the kind of overly dramatic, this is definitely going to be the end episode no matter what happens. This is the final mission. Again, just rub that in a little bit more in this. Um, but kind of an interesting bit. So again, the 084 signal lets everyone know to come to this bar to bring an item that Enoch has placed throughout time with various people and various instructions looking for... Oh, waiting for this time so they can all come together and rebuild this machine. Um, so I guess while Fitzsimmons were kind of living their life and raising their young little girl here, Enoch was traveling back through time because, again, he only got left in time when the ship had left him for those several uh, decades, and he certainly didn't have any items, and many of these, of course, placed a lot earlier in time. So that must have been what he was doing with the time machine, flying back and forth in order to set all of these little breadcrumbs uh, that could then be reassembled by Gemma uh, later on. Um, which, again, was just a whole kind of beautiful scene. Uh, uh, I loved, again, we get our callbacks to our other agents. I love the Garrett hand, again, sort of trade-off right there. We get Enoch's contributions, the fact that these agents have had these things for this whole long period of time. And, of course, these are the pieces that allowed Gemma with the little bits of memory that she can draw together to, uh, to put the machine together that can pull Fitz back. And, yeah, when she was doing the machine, knew Fitz was going to be here. I mean, okay, let's be honest. I saw the pictures, publicity pictures, earlier on the week, like everyone else. Yeah, spoiler, major spoiler there with those. Um, but yeah, I, that, that was sort of a, a cool little bit. Um, and I just love the setup. Obviously, I'm a big Fitzsimmons fan. It was heavily emotional for that. And why there are little moments, what the heck, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this next pick as our Save of the Week! For this week, and this is, of course, what we have been waiting for uh, in many ways all season, and that is the story of Fitz and Gemma. Where did they go? What happened? And and I loved how Fitz, I loved how they integrated that in as starting to tell a little story. You had scoliosis when you were a child, and you had to lay on your back all the time, and I'm going to give her one little moment to catch on, and then I'm going to pull all the little strings that connect that out. It was, again, it was sort of a beautiful way. It was a beautiful storytelling, and it gave us our insight over to the time with Fitz and Simmons that, yeah, they had a time machine. They had a chance to live their lives, to spend time together, unthreatened, away from everything. Um because they could return back at any time. So, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. And again, a lot of, a lot of people theorize, of course, no, Fitz isn't dead. Gemma and them had a, a daughter, and that's what she is protecting, and that's what Fitz is protecting, and you were all right. Definitely. And again, cutest damn little button who we don't get to see until later on in the episode. Maybe we'll say that's a great addendum to the scene of the week, because it does sort of complete the story. Um... But again, I just, I love that bit because it does give her emotional bit. It does sort of pull things. And of course, we don't get the full reveal until later on of Gemma getting the full grasp and everything of, of, of what the truth of it is. Uh, but I just, I love the setup. I love it just a quick way. I was hoping it was going to be a bit more of an episode story-wise. But I think they did this appropriately. Uh, and again, it was just, it was a beautiful way to reconnect these characters to sort of give us our little back model, you know, a montage story, uh, and, and bring us kind of like right up to the moment before, of course, we get our big final reveal. Um, would be remiss before talking about Nathaniel, despite the fact that I kind of grew tired with him throughout this episode. Actually, both he and Cora 
the fact that Cora did end up, of course, being the key, which Rob had, had uh, clued in on uh, uh, previously. So, Rob, you were definitely right with that. Um, and again, I mean, and that was fun. I love when they bring up what it is that we're fighting for. And of course, again, it's family. In the larger sense, of course, is fighting with their sister for that family. The agents are fighting for themselves. They are a family. Of course, we've got Fitz and Simmons. They've got their own family. Family, family, family is everywhere. Sure, that's what we're fighting for emotionally, that that's all great. Um, but yeah, Nathaniel, I guess at this point, just seemed very... <sighs> that just getting an eye pocket. Um... Rich is very complaining and non-threatening. He didn't seem like he... The minute that he thought that he and, and Kuro were going to go and rule the world, and there was an emptiness to their plan. He's one guy who's got some power, and there's a whole Chronicom army, and he's on their ship. I mean, it was just the delusion aspect at that point. I had no idea where his plan or what he thinks this was going to happen immediately just afterwards here. So, all of his... Threats and, and, and interactions and everything just became kind of annoying uh, in that sense. Uh, Cora, look, I'm glad that she and Daisy in the end sort of got, got back together. Um, really, I think the big one there is, and in a way from a character graduation standpoint, Daisy got to do the Colson speech to Cora, which I thought was very appropriate. You know, was only using her power for defense. I'm not going to try and kill you. If you want to try and kill me, that's your thing. But I see the good in you, and we can do this. We can, you know what I mean? She got to do the, the Colson speech. Um, and it basically worked. I mean, at least got her stunned in a moment to let Daisy go so she could run back. And then, unfortunately, I mean, again, that was cool. The following scene with her and Nathaniel, she came across like, she was brain addled. It made me think of Fitz back in season two after he had the, the damage and stuff. She just was like, I don't know, and she was making sense, and I, and I believed her. And it just, I mean, she seemed like really kind of like broken down at that moment. But again, like, structurally <laughs> inside. So, I don't know. That, that kind of was off. The fact that uh, uh, Nathaniel is ready to shoot her and take her power immediately afterwards. Okay, that does clue into who Nathaniel is. And I guess he is able to take the powers from someone without actually killing them, which worked out well for the agents. Uh, but did give us our nice big battle between uh, Daisy and Nathaniel. And again, great effect stuff. I, I think Daisy should have been wiping the floor with him, but at least when they got to the end, you found out that she had to kind of do the sacrifice play uh, to stop Nathaniel. It's like, oh, you've been playing with him the whole time. That's what I'd like to believe. And she was just doing that because, yeah, then she could turn around and just rock his world because she is Quake, regardless of who Nathaniel is. So, get a great way to sort of wrap things up. It should come down to a to head to head to them and the fact that Cora does have her redemptive arc and save and eventually does become. An agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., but really doing good stuff, not just talking about good stuff. Uh, that was great. The only downside, like I said, is they play up the sacrifice moment of Daisy having to die in order to stop Nathaniel, and we do see her floating out in space, but we only get that for like two seconds. To me, it was like the chewy bit on Rise of Skywalker. If you're going to play that you kill a character, give us that dramatic moment. Even if you give us like a commercial break right there to think, oh my god, and then come back and that means something. But if you're gonna kill a character for dramatic moments and then two seconds later go, ah, no, 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 they're still alive, you undercut your drama right there. That's all I'm saying. And yes, Deke gets his own section here. Did the sacrifice play, and in a perfect Deke way. Uh, I mean, again, they just sort of, sort of set up between Daisy and Deke. Like I had mentioned before, is you've got to save Gemma. I've got to save Gemma, yeah. Well, and Deke. Yeah, whatever. Sure. Well, okay. Yeah, he's he's going to be there. Um, 
But I mean, he was tough when Nathaniel was talking about the Chronicoms, like they're going to be able to go in and tear it apart. He's just like, oh, you mean like a professional job, non-amateurish? You know, he's, he's got some toughness over these two, these couple seasons, and that's good. Um, and I loved how he does sort of take the sacrifice. I mean, in some ways, it is an easy way to wrap up the character line and, and not have to worry about where he's going to go and timeline issues and stuff like that. It does smooth things out in that sense. I mean, yeah, you get Sousa, but he's from the past, not from an alternate future, and that gets more complicated. Um, but the fact that, that Sousa, again, kind of from that world but pulled out, is ready to do the sacrifice play. That is his move. And before he can even get it, the <laughs> Teeks in the background... <laughs> Just, just literally farting out his moment. No, I will do it. I'm dealing with the tech knowledge in order to pull this off. Plus, Andy's right. He's basically a rock god there. You open for Twisted Sister, right? People were huge fans. If he's good, plus he can come up with all this tech stuff early on. He doesn't have to worry about Mac and anyone messing up his stuff because they're all back in the original timeline. Really, man, I think Deke is, uh, Deke came out mostly on top on this. So, where is everyone by the end? Well, Yo-Yo's still an agent, uh, working with Piper and Robot Davis, uh, <laughs> which was awesome. I guess when uh, uh, Simmons tells uh, uh, Piper there, guard this and I will give you whatever you want. Again, mm, God. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Henstridge was just owning that bit. I love that just drop of tension right there. Because she said, and she could understand guarding it for Fitz. Later on you find out Little babies in there also makes a lot more sense. Uh, but so I guess what Piper wanted was Davis back. I'm not really sure how they did that, actually. Um, now, Davis had a family, right? Does Robot Davis go back to his family? And I guess it hasn't been that long, so maybe they didn't know, because they went back right at the end of Season 6, and he died just before the whole end of the whole final battle. So, But again, that's the question. Also, how do they get Davis's memory and stuff into the bot? He was never in the framework. Could you scan a corpse brain and bring all that? I don't know. High technology. I guess it doesn't matter. Glad that he was back. Uh, cool little moment. Um, Mac, of course, still director. Helicarrier. Again, looking very uh, Nick Fury-ish, and I guess he's in Russia right now checking something out. Uh, May is teaching at the Colson Academy for S.H.I.E.L.D., very appropriate. Um, and uh, Flint, alive still with them, because of course he was there to help piece together some of the time crystals so that that's how Fitz and them could do their whole thing. Um, so yeah, so he's a student there and she is teaching. Not sure what she's teaching, but she's teaching. Um, let's see, who we got? Of course, Fitz and Simmons are now retired. They're raising cute little young Arya. Uh, Daisy is, uh, out patrolling space. I don't know if this is our implied agents of sword idea here as well. Uh, with sister and Sousa and a small little crew. So, hey, that's awesome. Also, great that they get reception even all the way out there back to Earth, man. I'd love to get their, uh, uh, uh Wi-Fi password. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, we have Coulson, who is, like I said, Wandering the earth like Cain, I guess. So, I mean, they're all kind of, they're, they're doing that. I get everybody. I think so, yeah. And then Deke's, you know, uh, another planet. Zeus is there. So, yeah. So, everybody, again, still kind of continuing on their little moments, continuing on their lives. We get a little potential little talk of, of uh, um, May and Coulson and maybe hooking up later on. Maybe not. Again, it's a new world for them. Uh, but, of course, we do have the final gift from Mac to uh, uh, Coulson, which is Lola, new and improved, transforming, colorized, and again, final fly-off, which is how the series opened up. So, an appropriate ending in that sense. Oh, and of course, for those looking for the larger MCU Endgame tie-in, yeah, we sort of, 
with, of course, Quantum Realm. Um, yeah, that was sort of a great bit. Loved the little Ant-Man Quantum World reference. Also, perfectly ties in with those parallel universe or diverging timelines as the MCU is sort of referring to it. So, I kind of appreciated it. That was kind of a nice little perfect tie-in. The fact that it actually, he beamed, apparently, pretty quickly from, uh, the box to the bar through the quantum realm. Taking the ship, I guess, took a little bit more time. The fact they got to actually fly through the realm and everything was definitely a, a cool visual effect. Like I mentioned before, this is definitely where they've been saving their effects budget for. And, you know, I totally agree with that. Uh, but yeah, just sort of a fun little bit, fun little larger tie-in. We got a little, a little Quantum Realm reference, and again, it does sort of build off more on that parallel universe or diverging timeline uh, view of the larger MCU. And yes, of course, there are always Star Wars references peppered throughout this series, our final episode, uh, no exception. And no, again, I'm not talking about the aforementioned death drama of Daisy and Chewie there. Uh, but no, May being Obi-Wan. When all the shield get bases, she collapsed, feeling all of their deaths. Oh my god, can you feel all of that? Oh, passing. It's like a hundred thousand agents screaming out in pain, and then suddenly nothing. Look, I love the Star Wars references. I am not harping on it at all. I totally appreciated the little Obi-Wan bit, but Maybe it was a little much. Maybe just a little bit. Alright, so of course there is so much more to talk about. So many little moments. And I'm just not going to have enough time to do it here. But, if you still got a hankering and a hungering for a bit more S.H.I.E.L.D. talk, please be sure to catch us this Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, right here on D's Reviews for Fans of S.H.I.E.L.D. As myself, Rob Stone, and Don Willie will dive further into this episode, talk about our likes, our dislikes, our hopes. Everything will be laid off the table. It's probably going to be a little longer than the normal one-hour episode. So if you can make it live, please do so. We're going to take as many questions as we can. We're going to share as many thoughts. It's our big finale episode so you know it's appropriate we want to make this as big and include you guys as much as possible but it's not really going to be the end i mean come on bands of shield here man badges and everything we're going to be doing uh, some retrospectives uh, through the seasons. I think we're going to be doing some season reviews. Uh, we're also going to touch on Agent Carter. So we've got some big plans going on. Plus, we're adding a new fan in for those discussions. So really looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of time. Uh, we're going to need a little bit of break. We're going to need to absorb everything. Uh, plus, really want to actually sit back and re-watch some of these seasons uh, and, and really get up to fresh. Don't want to just talk about, oh yeah, I remember this episode or not. I really want to get in now that the series is over. What really strikes? What really were the ones that, that pieced together that represented each of the seasons? So, stay tuned. Notices will go out. We will have continuing Fans of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s episodes where we cover each season of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. plus Agent Carter as well. We're covering the slew of this corner of the Marvel Universe. So, Stay tuned, that will be coming your way. But for now, we're going to wrap things up. Again, it's not a goodbye. We're still going to be here, and I love all of your comments. I love all of your discussions. I love sharing all these memories with each and every one of you. So, look, can't just walk away. But we kind of have to do so for now. It's late. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you all so much for joining me with the reviews. This review, the reviews all season, these past years that I have covered Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it has meant so much and really just warms my heart. I'm sad the show is over with, but I am glad that, uh, you know, at least we can all still interact, isn't it? Let me know what you guys are thinking. Of course, 
Put your thoughts down in comments below. Tell me what you guys thought about this finale. Did it satisfy you? Were you left wanting for more? Are you hoping that Disney Plus is going to pick up something like we all do? Let me know what you guys think and throw those down in the section below. Uh, you can just catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Darren Jakes. Please hit the like button, hit the notification button to let you know when any reviews drop, plus again those season retrospectives. And uh, the best way to do that is to be sure you're a subscriber. Do that by clicking this button right here. And we'll go ahead and throw up a couple of our latest reviews right here for you to check out. So, for now, I'm D, and I'm out of here. Hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.